So we have entered into the creation, really the framework of doing this, the production, the ultimate publication of a brand new transversional apostolic record of what people have long called the New Testament. And it will be unlike anything that has ever been done before and it will all lead to the betterment of believers today as they consult the Bible for spiritual guidance. Who is doing this? We are. Who exactly is we? In the actual creation of it, it's just me. Uh, all by my lonesome. Now, of course, I have supporters at home and I have volunteers who do so much to keep the ministry rolling and out to you. But in the end, some may wonder, well, who the heck do you think you are that you could undertake such a task? Well, let me share with, uh, with you a true story. Years ago, when we first entered into ministry up here, uh, our, my wife and I were in great debt. And I was traveling back and forth from Huntington Beach to Salt Lake City to do ministry every week. And one night in desperation, I took a bike and I rode to the beach where I had spent thousands of hours on the sand and in the surf at this one location. And I sat there, the night was super, super clear and windy and the ocean whitewash was very uh, phosphorescent. And I prayed out loud. I was literally calling to God to speak into my desperate heart. And I didn't know how to manage ministry at that time. We were doing the show and it was growing and I did, we just had nothing of stability. So I didn't know what was ahead of us. And uh, I wasn't getting anything while I sat on the beach, though it was just unbelievably clear. Uh, of, of a night, but I had this impression to leave that windy berm uh, by the water and to take my bike and ride north um, toward the pier that you just saw in that video, which, was, uh, about, which is about three miles up the coast north of where I was. So I started riding and the bike trail I started out on was dark. There weren't very many overhead lights. There was a lot of drunk teenagers. There were some homeless. Trash was blown around because it was windy on uh, the road and uh, there was wind resistance as I headed toward the lights of the pier three miles north. And the closer I got to the pier, the more developed the path started to become around me. Uh, more city lights were coming up so the, the path was illuminated and uh, then I saw cleaner restrooms and less homeless and better snack shacks for the public. And then I saw a hotel that had been built with illuminated pools and a festive uh, parties I could hear uh, in the hotels from people having fun in the cool night air. And then people started showing up uh, on the uh, bike path as they do late in the evening around the pier. And then before I knew it, I had arrived and I stood next to an open air restaurant, which is right at the base of the pier. And people were there drinking and having a great time in the music. And as I turned to head back around, because I usually just get there and I turn to head back home, God stopped me in my tracks. I don't usually talk like that, um, but he spoke and it was a direct, precise message that went straight to my soul. It was him. I didn't hear the voice. Everyone qualifies, but there was no voice, but it spoke as if there were a voice, probably better than a voice. I was not thinking of getting an answer at that time. I wasn't expecting one then. I had simply decided when I got started writing, I'm just gonna have to trust you. And I'm just gonna have to see what happens. And he asked me a question. He said, how did you get here? And amidst the clamor of people laughing and talking, I said in my mind, I rode my bike, I pedaled. And then he said, did you build any of this? And somehow I knew that he's referring to the pier and the hotels and the restaurants and the restrooms and the lights and the path, all the buildup the, that happened as I got closer and closer to that pier. And I, of course, in my heart said no. And then clear as a bell, God said, you ride, I will build, you pedal. I ride pedal, I will build. That's what he said. Referring to the ministry that I was so troubled over. And I returned home without a care in the world and I told Mary what happened. She's a witness to it, it was more than a decade ago. 
And over the years, he has been true to that thing he told me in the simplest of terms. You ride, I'll build. So at this point, I, I just want to point out that Sean McCraney is pointing to an experience in which he believes that the voice of God spoke to him at a time in which he was discouraged in his ministry and he was looking for guidance and he believes that God says, you ride, I will build. And he is saying that in response to the question that he's framing, who do you think you are that you can take on translating, creating another translation of the Bible? I just want you to think about that and the message that he is trying to plant in your consciousness. That God, if God, if he feels led to do this, then God must have led him to do it. That means this must be inspired by God. And so this translation is valid because God has spoken to me and said, you ride and I will build. 